my name is Jana and you're watching Finnish Knitting Stories. Welcome! This is my space where I talk about knitting, crochet, yarn spinning and sometimes some other crafts as well. I'm coming to you from Finland, from the southern part. Today is Saturday, August 13th, <laughs> probably, yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful sunny day. It's actually already evening and it's very hot. It's very hot. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I have a house all to myself for around an hour and I decided, hmm, I would probably need to clean, but I don't wanna. <laughs> so I could record a podcast instead. <laughs> mm, cleaning the house, recording a podcast. I think the choice is obvious. <laughs> I can clean the house later when everybody's back. <laughs> so uh, you can find me on Instagram, Escape to Nits, and on Ravelry, Escape to Nits. And all the information is linked in the description box down below. Just hit that little arrow and it will open either down or on the side. And there you will have links to everything I'm talking about. All the important stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I was here just last week and we had a nice chat with you. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm back again. And again, I don't have any finished objects. And... I think it's okay. I decided it's okay. But I have a lot of new cast-ons. That's why that's why I'm here. <laughs> because I just I was too excited. I wanted to share it with, with you. I really, really want it. Um yeah, I will show you today the progress on all the things I'm working on and a couple of new cast-ons. <laughs> things just happen around here. Yeah, could not resist. I'm weak. I'm weak and <laughs> I'm easily influenced. <laughs> um, okay, let's start with... Where is it? Where is it? Let's start with the first one of my ongoing projects, which is Sea Blouse by Anjunits, Anna Tanskanen. Uh, the pattern is available in Finnish and in English on Ravelry, and I'm still working on it. And it's a little summer top, and for some reason I... For some reason. I know exactly the reason why I haven't finished it because the yarn, the yarn is hurting my hand. So I've been, I've been working on it very slowly, but steadily. I'm adding a couple of stripes a day and I'm actually soon done with the body. And then it's a piece of cake. It's just these little, little sleeves here. And it's really no big deal. I think I might be able to finish it this, this weekend. I hope so. I hope so. And the pattern is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It has a lacy yoke and then these the stripy body and I love it. There's and then losing stitches, of course, of course. Um, I'm knitting mine in um, two different yarns. Pattern also calls for two different yarns. This top one is Shepies Katona. I don't have I don't have ball bands with me. And then this other one is Isager Bommelin and. It's hurting my hands. <laughs> I had a whole story about the yarn, how I ran out, and then I had to reorder and from different store. And I got different dye lot, of course, that was predictable and that one was much lighter. The new one was much lighter than the old one. Here you can see the color difference. And then I, I just cut one of the balls and you can't actually see. I'm holding the yarn double here where I'm striping. And then I decided that I'm going to change one strand at a time. And I changed, I think, somewhere halfway through the body. And you can't really see where I did the change, even though there is a significant color difference. But as I only changed one of the strands, no big deal. And I'm very glad I, I ordered more of this yarn because I would have run out. I'm not yet done there. I still need to knit a bit longer on the body that, that it would not be cropped, that it would be normal length. And I love it. I love my colors. The only thing, I'm not really enjoying the yarn. I'm very sad to say that, but uh, one thing it's hurting my hands and another one, I don't know, I have a bad batch. Mine is full of knots. Um, like this, this 50 gram ball had two knots and why I stopped knitting on it this morning, because there is another knot coming. So three knots in 50 grams. Here is an, an, another 
another knot right there yeah in the 50 grams and i don't know i think it's upsetting at this price point <laughs> if it would be cheaper yarn i think i would be okay with that but this is not cheap yarn it's a cotton linen blend by Isager, and i'm a bit bummed out by all the knots <laughs> uh, yeah um but I will, I will keep working on it. I will finish it because I love the pattern and I can't wait to wear it. It's, it's, it's beautiful summer top and we still have summer left, obviously. Surprise. Uh, kids started school this week on Wednesday and I was like, okay, summer is over. And then wait, it's like mid, it's not even mid August yet. Why do I think summer is over? Now because school starts early in Finland. Yeah, and it feels like summer is over, but there is still almost a month of summer left. Yeah, so I think I will have time to, to wear this. And it's not very lightweight top, so I think it will be fine also on the cooler days. It's it's a thick, it's a DK. I think it was DK weight. Yeah, probably. So here's my sea blouse. I love it. I love it, and I hope to finish it this weekend if I don't hit more knots. I don't know, every knot just... <laughs> yeah, it, it makes me want to take a break when I hit a knot in the yarn. Um, and somebody asked me about the glue and I mentioned the glue in my previous episode that how I, when I tie the knot and I, I, I put a dab of textile glue on it and I wanted to take it with me to show it to you and now I forgot. I'll, I'll go get it. I'll go get it very quickly. Don't 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 go anywhere. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I'm back with the glue. I had it in the living room because that's where I was gluing knots. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't think if this is a proper way, but I talked about it in my previous episode. Good, go check it out. Where I, my my big confession about about how I join cotton and linen yarns. So this is the glue textile glue I'm using. There, <laughs> I think at least in Europe you should be able to get it. But I think any glue that dries out soft that doesn't dry hard will be fine. It just says textile glue. HT2, whatever that means, I don't know. Is it a code? Is it a name? But mine looks... Is it focusing like this? I hope it's focusing. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. So, that was my first whip. Was my first whip. And what else I've been working on? I've been working, still working on my pair of socks. They have grown a bit. They have grown a bit. Not much, but some amount. I'm done here with the gusset decreases. And the other one is here. This one, I'm, these, it's a pair of shorties. No pattern, just vanilla shorties with some accidental heel. <laughs> accidental fancy heel. And I'm knitting it with this yarn, my solar dyed yarn from this, this summer. If you're a long-term viewer, you have seen all of this and you know what I'm talking about. And nothing much to show, but I'm still working on them. <laughs> this is this episode is like a progress report. <laughs> I don't know. This week, I just feel like I've been all over the place because I've been grabbing this project, grabbing that project, working a bit on this, working a bit on that, have not had time for anything. Kids started school, I've been working, crazy, crazy, crazy. And yeah, we've been collecting berries and making juice, but we will talk about that in the end when we knit and chat. <laughs> um, and somebody has had a bit too many coffees today. Three. I have had three cups of coffee. Not like half these, but still. That's one too many. And I'm planning to have one more after, after we're done here. <laughs> it is a hot day, but I still want my coffee. Uh, yeah, I'm digressing. <laughs> Next project, next project, I'm showing it to you just that you would hold me accountable because this is for our daughter and she's asking about it every day and I promised that it will be done by Christmas and um, I decided that I'm gonna knit at least one of, it's a cozy memories blanket or coziest memories, memory blanket, whatever, it has many names. Um, 
it's from scrap yarn and I counted that if I make at least one square a day I need to make one square a day and then I'll be done by Christmas so I start every morning with making a square and sometimes I make one in the evening as well but not every day so this week I have made 11 squares this whole row this whole row was knit this week I've been very good and responsible mother <laughs> and I have made more than one square a day so here is the one this is from this morning and I think I have to I have to add one more this evening when the row is done and we can move move to the next row so I've been I've been very good <laughs> yes and it is already quite big basically it would be enough if I would just finish it and make an i-cord edging it would be a child size blanket but I want it to be adult size blanket that she could carry it through life with her and she she's really looking forward I'm trying to add more pinks to make it more girly she loves pink yeah I'm also using darker yarns and more autumnal colors that because I want each square to be different color but I'm trying to add more more pinks that it would be a happy blanket there 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 and then I've been thinking about pink neon border, I-cord border, probably. I think that's what I'm going to do when it's done. I would love to finish it before Christmas. She's asking, can she get it for her birthday? And that, that's not going to happen. Her birthday is in a month. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a fast knitter, but not this fast. <laughs> or I don't know if I work just on this blanket. Could I finish it in one month? Probably still not. It's it's a lot to go. Let's not put pressures on ourselves and say that it's going to be ready for Christmas. Yes. So that's my happy scrappy project. And I'm actually more than happy to work on it and get it off my needles. Not that they are attached here. I'm using, I'm, I don't have them here. I'm just using two of my DPNs, two, two and a half millimeter, because this is fingering weight. Yes. So. Nothing else to tell about it, but I, I'll keep you updated on that. Uh, my next one is another blanket. And there are so many of them out there. And so many. <laughs> Battenberg. So many of you have started one. You can blame me. It's it's okay. You can blame me for, for all your <laughs> accidental cast-ons. <laughs> that, that is totally fine. I'm more than happy to take blame for those. <laughs> uh, this is Battenberg Blanket by Sandra Paul. Uh, Cherry Heart, uh, she has Cherry Heart podcast here on YouTube and it's wonderful. Go take a look if you are, have not seen it. And the idea of it is that you use your little beautiful scraps to make squares. Here is my box of squares. There are a bit more than I had. You just make squares and then you join them together with the solid color squares. Yes, I need to cover my face that it would focus. So you crochet. These all are crochet. Where's my hook? I've lost my hook. I hope it's on the sofa and that it didn't drop somewhere in this. I have a pile of project bags around me on the floor. I've lost my hook. Okay, I'll look for it, but yeah. This is my box and I have a rule that I can't make more squares than fits in this box. And so far, I've been very good at it. I have only half box of squares because I decided that I want to join them straight away. I don't want to end up with a thousand squares that I need to join later. So I'll show you my progress on it. It's not as much as I managed last week, but it has grown. Check, it's growing sideways now here this whole corner is new can you can you see yeah i've been adding i've been adding i'm very very happy very very happy about it i just i'm on a roll <laughs> i've been adding squares to this and i think i think it's lovely i already love it and it's it's growing pretty quickly i have more than I have more than 100 squares here attached, probably around 100, I don't know, 20 could be, and I love it. Yeah, I'll be showing it here from time to time. If if it looks bigger, I will show it. 
Um, yeah, that's the blanket. And now I have two new castons. I have two new castons. One you could have already guessed from the last video. At the end of last video, I was putting uh, yarns together, some kind of, yeah. I was playing with the yarns there in our bedroom on our bed. I just pulled a bunch of yarns out of the shelf and then went and laid them on the bed. And I I found the color combo that I want to use for Garter Marler by Stephen West. Yes, I, I cast it on. <laughs> and if you follow me on Instagram, you have already seen the beginning of it. And I have made quite... E now, everything is falling. This is very unstable construction here. <laughs> um, I decided I'm going to use all the pretty yarns I've been saving for my special projects. I'm not going to save them anymore. I'm just going to work with them because life is short. Knit with your good yarns. That does not sound very nice, but like really. Knit with, your, knit with those good yarns. Don't save them. Knit with them. And yeah, I have yarn attached. I'll try to show you all the beautiful colors here. Some of them are dyed by me, but the biggest part this time is by Rova Silmo Solmo. I've been buying Sirpa's yarn. Sirpa is a Finnish yarn dyer and she, she dyes beautiful yarns like this. I don't know the colors. I think this was Lokaku, I think. I have the label in there and now I can't fish it out with one hand. I decided to use all the beautiful colors I've been saving for some special project. And then I have some Ara yarn here. And then I have the one by Gassagerho Pom Pom. Pom Pom yarns and then some, some random bits and pieces where, yeah, even ee! the tiny ball escaped from me. This is some leftover from our daughter's silk merino cowl. It was... I don't remember whose yarn it is. I think Solo Shop. And then I have my little hand-dyed bits. My dusty rose. And my oyster color. And my <laughs> safe boring beige named Kappa. So, yeah, that's my color palette. And the tiny chicken lives here as well, because it keeps me company and it makes me happy. If you want to hear more about the tiny chicken, skip two episodes back. <laughs> Intrigued. Okay, now let's, let's, let's get to the cardigan. I have even managed to separate the sleeves. Can you believe that? I've been... This is such a quick and addicting knit. The only problem, I can't work on it in the evenings. So I try to squeeze a couple of rows in with my morning coffee after I do the square of the day because uh, my colors are very close together and I can't really spot the color changes when it's dark. Yeah. So here it is. I'll show you the back. <laughs> here it is. Here is my garter marler and it's gonna be it's gonna be so pretty. Look, main thing is not to lose any stitches. It's gonna be so pretty. I really, really, really love it. I'm so happy I started it. And if you feel that Steven's patterns or his knits, sample knits, look a bit too crazy and wild and bold for you, you can always tone them down by picking the colors that are your favorites that work for you. It doesn't have to be all neon and bright. You can even do this, or this could have been grays, or different shades of beige, or I don't know, greens. Like, whatever. Whatever works for you. Yeah, it's way more toned down if you stay in within one color. But you can also add a pop. <laughs> I added a couple of stripes of mohair, but you can't really... I don't know, can you really see them? But they are there. They are there just for for a little texture. I don't know. There's a little fuzz. That's my mohair stripe. <laughs> it is there. <laughs> I added them in two two places. There, there there is a little fuzz. So here, here it is. This is how it's looking. 
I think I showed you the wrong side, but does it really matter? I think it doesn't matter. Yes. This is my garter modeler, and I think I will finish it in no time. Somebody said that, oh, you will finish it in a week. N no, I don't think I will finish it in a week, but maybe in two or three weeks. Because I have another cast on. I'll put, I'll put this basket of my soft, soft pastels away. And <laughs> I have another cast on. <laughs> and I said I'm not gonna do it. And I said I don't need a new shawl. I say a lot of things around here, don't I? <laughs> um, yeah. Guess what? I'm weak. Uh, I'm weak and I'm influenced by pretty pictures on Instagram. And I love Anna Johanna and I love a mystery in knit alongs. So. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Oh, I just... I think you have probably... No spoilers here. I think most of you have already seen the Clue 4 of Wild Child Mystery Knit Along by Anna Johanna. I don't know. The topic spoke to me. Her color choice spoke to me. And I just went for it. Yeah. <laughs> I just went for it. And now I'm working on a shawl. <laughs> Remember, no judgment here, no judgment. <laughs> and now I'm on the short needle because we were doing it, something interesting here. We needed two sets of needles for the short rows. And now I grabbed the one with the short cable and now I'm stuck on it. I'm stuck and I can't show you the shawl properly. But it's starting to be asymmetrical. I don't know what's going to happen next clue. That's coming out tomorrow. So... Uh, if you think you missed it and uh, you still want to join, you absolutely can, because I was late. I started when everybody already finished clue number two, and I still managed to catch up, because it's just the very beginning. It's still a very, very small and manageable, manageable amount of knitting. It is brioche, though. If you are not a fan of it... Mm, you can join anyways, because I'm not a fan of brioche. Honestly, it's my another confession. This is like time of confessions. Brioche is not my favorite thing to knit. Not at all. But I love the look of it. But I'm not enjoying the process as much <laughs> as many other people. Because somebody says, oh, I love brioche. I love knitting brioche. I don't love knitting brioche, but I love how it looks. So I'm powering through and hoping that something else except brioche will happen in this. But I love the pattern. Look, there are flowers and little baubles. And I love my color choice. It's bold. It's not beige, it's not pink, because I have a lot of those shawls. And I decided to go with something very different. I very rarely use all sorts of violets and purples and lilacs, and I decided to go with it. This is my own hand dyed, it's lilacs in bloom. It's not as bright as it looks in the screen. It's a bit calmer, but for some reason it looks brighter with... My two other colors. Here is my color. It's a yarn mess because it's a yarn mess here because it's all twisted. It's all still attached to the shawl. And yeah, lilacs in bloom. This looks a lot like frozen watermelon, but it's not. It's a neon peach because this is not pink. It looks pink in a screen, but it's more peachy. It's more corally. It's more orange than it is pink. And it's absolutely impossible to photograph. That's why I do not have this color online. I only have it in my store <laughs> because it's impossible to photograph. It looks like my other colorway, which is, I don't have it here with me, or do I? Do I have a leftover somewhere? No, I don't. Yeah, I could show you some other time. And this is carousel. This is very old colorway from the very beginning and I brought it back, I think last year for the knit fest and I dyed another batch this year and I love it. It's just very soft and delicate. It's one of the colors in my Soldotna crop that I was, was, was I wearing it last time or one before? I don't remember. I don't remember, but yeah. So these are my three, my three colors. I'm very adventurous with this and 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 i really love this shawl and what's interesting that the wrong side is also very very pretty 
it doesn't look like wrong side it also it's also very pretty yeah but this is this is the right side and right now it's it's asymmetrical because there it's it's growing here And I'm waiting for the next clue. <laughs> I just hope the brioche would end eventually. <laughs> that would make me even more happy about it. <laughs> yes. So. And I know some of you have started it as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all my fault. I know. I know. <laughs> I shouldn't be knitting all these pretty things. <laughs> but isn't it fun when you join when you join other people all around the world and you all knit the same thing at the same time. I love knit-alongs. We should have a knit-along here on Finnish Knitting Stories. I just need to figure out what kind. I'm still going with my old, all my old favorites, but we could figure out something else for autumn, maybe. Okay, let's bark the yarn before I make it in a... It's a mess. It's a mess, you guys. And this is... It lives in a very pretty summery bag. It's by... Give me a second. It's by Knitter Bag on Etsy. And it's a beautiful linen, linen bag with the flower print on it. Both sides have flower print and it has some pockets inside and a handle. And it's a, it's a lovely bag made in Lithuania. They have a lot of fun bags there in their Etsy store. And... I have one as well. <laughs> Not all my bags are by Bertie and Puppet, but <laughs> most of them are <laughs> there. <laughs> but I have some other bags as well. And I have more new bags because, yes, those were all my current whips. I have more whips. I have like 99 more whips and counting. But as I'm not working on them right now, right this week, I'm not showing them this time. And yeah. I have more new project bags, but I didn't buy any. I didn't buy any. Uh, <laughs> I actually got them as a gift. A lovely customer and a viewer of this podcast traveled from far away last week and visited my little store. Hi, Birgit. If you're watching, I hope you're watching. <laughs> thank you for visiting and thank you for the gifts. And I... I asked for vision if I can mention her and she said yes and I want to show you what she brought me. I don't know. It's like <sighs> I still can't believe it why somebody would would bring me stuff just 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 because. I don't know. I feel spoiled. I feel like I don't deserve this and <laughs> I'm not going to cry. I will just show you what what this crazy woman did awesome crazy woman in the mo in the best way <laughs> she brought me <laughs> she came with a big bag uh, first of all she brought me yarn scraps for my battenberg blanket and my cozy memories blanket and that was amazing and then some scraps to make a uh, dolly for our daughter's birthday i will talk about that later uh <laughs> yeah she shared her yarn scraps with me uh, and then th there were some gifts for the kids. She made beautiful pouches. I don't have them with me. And there were little crochet mice inside because kids have them. Our son has that mouse on his nightstand and our daughter took the pouch and she put some yarn in it and crochet hook. And now if she leaves the house, she takes it with her. It's her project bag. She, she says she's going to knit in a car <laughs> with a crochet hook. She's not actually knitting, but she pretends she's, she's knitting. Uh, yeah and then there was a big box for me and in a beautiful beautiful floral wrapping paper and then they said oh she had her kids with her and then the dot her daughter wanted me to open the gift and they said it's my birthday gift and my birthday is only next month and like it's not even my birthday week or month or I don't do that <laughs> I don't do my birthday month my birthday week honestly I've never even liked my birthday, like my whole childhood and growing up, I did not like my birthdays. And I think a couple of years ago, I decided that enough. Like, why Why am I suffering? Why do I hate my birthday? What if I just learn to enjoy it? Learn to enjoy it, learn to celebrate it in my, in my very own way. I usually don't do anything. I don't go out. I We get some nice food home. We cook or we, we get a takeaway and I knit. 
<laughs> and I, I, I have my birthday cast on and that's how I learned to enjoy my birthday. And there is no pressure. I'm not having parties and I just do what I love. And that's how I learned to enjoy my birthdays. So, and now <laughs> I'm getting all these awesome gifts from, from lovely people around me. And <laughs> look at that. I have my very own fox. I don't... <laughs> it's adorable. I have my little fox buddy. Uh, he doesn't have a name yet. Or she. I have not decided if it's a boy or a girl. There's a tail and everything. A little, little green scarf. <laughs> it's so sweet. She told me I think it's made in Tukuvul. So it's it's this... It's very tactile and... A bit rough finish sheep wool and it feels it feels so nice it's like you can get a hand massage on, on this little guy <laughs> um, yes I love it I think I can't decide what's the best part of the gift I don't know why anybody would do this for me and there it was a fox card and <laughs> I'm just so happy I'm just so happy and then and then she made me a project bag but not one. She made me two project bags. And for the person who can't sew, that's me. This, this is, this is a fantastic gift. I always appreciate a good project bag. And it has foxes. Both of them have foxes. And they have these beautiful ribbons. And the lining is... So, so pretty. I love a good lining. I love when the lining goes with a theme and it has a big bottom so I can I can put a lot of things in here. This is a good size and look look at that embroidery detail right there. All the people who can sew your magic, your, your pure magic. <laughs> yeah, the fox fabric is is beautiful it it suits me so well and i love it and i think i can fit a sweater in it i definitely can fit a sweater in it the other one is a bit smaller but i think i can def definitely more than a pair of socks this one also has a very fun lining and this one also i don't know how do i show it to you the zipper i'm fascinated by the zipper it's this multicolor zipper it's changing colors I love it. I love everything about it. <laughs> I love it. So pretty. Thank you so much. And I hope you visit another time and we could have tea, coffee in it together. That's... Or I could go visit your town <laughs> someday. <sighs> Thank you. And then I have more happy mail, but I did not ask for a permission from my viewer from Denmark. Can I mention her name? Yeah, I have already thanked her in an email. We did a little swap. I sent her some yarn and then she sent me scraps and a beautiful bag. I just opened it today. It arrived last week and I was waiting for a good moment when I, I could just enjoy it because I did not want to rush with it. When I get something special, especially something from my fellow crafters, I want to enjoy every moment of opening that. But I'm not going to show it just yet. I think I I will ask first if I can mention her name. <laughs> and then I when I get the response, I will I will show it and talk about it. I will show it anyways, but yeah, and I need the permission if I can mention her. <laughs> um what else? What else do I have here? Ah, what am I wearing today? I completely forgot to mention that. I think you all know what this is. This is a ranunculus. This is ranunculus by Knit Cafe Midori and mine is very light, very airy. It's knit in a very thin linen yarn at, at a very loose gauge. It's just here to... When I have these these thin strap dresses, I, I like something to cover myself up a bit that I wouldn't feel naked. <laughs> yeah, and this, this just does the trick. It's it's a short one. I'm wearing it over a linen dress and it's it's very loose and 
I think I used like 100 grams of yarn or less. It's like linen yarn. We were supposed to get more of this linen in the store this week, but the package is somewhere shipped with, uh, stuck with the delivery guy. I don't know. It did not arrive. I really hope it's not lost and that it comes next week and we can have more of this yarn in the store. But that's not, not related. One more thing. Yeah, as you already know, uh, my daughter and I were both having birthdays next month and I was talking last time very quickly at the end that do you have any good pattern suggestions? I want to make her a toy, probably knit toy, but could be crochet as well because I don't know. I went on Ravelry and I just got so confused because there are so many and I would like the one that's that involves minimal amount of sewing parts together. And a couple of years ago, I made her Christopher bunny by Susan B. Anderson and I want to make another little fellow that the bunny would have a friend. I did not check if the bunny is decent. Yes, <laughs> she has clothes on. <laughs> I just grabbed this this from our daughter's room. I gave it to her like that and many of you have seen it but sorry if I'm showing it again but there are a lot of new viewers who haven't seen it and there are all kind of little blankies and pillows and little clothes that I have made and little scarves <laughs> and little pants with the hole in the back for the tail <laughs> there <laughs> and a hat with the holes for ears. Bunny has a lot of stuff. Bunny has better wardrobe than I do. And Bunny has a silk dress, silk merino dress from some leftovers. And I think this was a dress as well. And another silk merino dress. Do you have a silk merino dress? Bunny has two. <laughs> uh, I'm jealous. I'm really jealous. And a little mohair cape. Anyways, Bunny has a lot of stuff. And uh, Bunny needs a friend. What? Yeah, what Bunny doesn't have, Bunny doesn't have a friend. Uh, this this is the pattern by Susan B. Anderson. It's Christopher Bunny, except ours is not Christopher. It's a girl. And uh, yeah, she doesn't have official name. It keeps changing, but she's mostly poopoo. -poo. <laughs> she's mostly poopoo. -poo. Um, yeah. So I wanted something to be around uh, uh, this size. I don't know how tall is she. Some good 20 centimeters, maybe. And... Also, a bit, but Bunny is a bit chunky. She has been she has been eating a lot of carrots and <laughs> uh, yeah. So that they could use the same clothes. Somebody suggested that why I don't use the same pattern and just make it into a different a different animal. It's a good idea. I'm just afraid that if I improvise, the animal might not be recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a dog that looks like a mouse or a mouse that looks like a cat. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that good at <laughs> improvising with the toys. I've seriously, I've only made a couple of toys in my life. This one, several gnomes and some little crochet toys when they were babies. So, I don't know. There are so many good patterns and I'm I still have not decided and I need to I need to work on it when she's not around so in the evenings or because I want it to be a surprise and I don't know I could make a dolly or I could make a kitty or a mouse there is a very cool unicorn pattern but unicorn can't wear same cloth it's it's a different body shape and I don't know Still undecided. Just wanted to, to share my thought process with you with you, and thank you all for the wonderful suggestions. <laughs> they were very helpful, but <laughs> I think I'm even more confused because I have looked at them and my list just keeps growing. I want to make all of them, but I need to pick one. And I think I will. I will today sit down and pick a pattern and start probably start working on it because I have a month. I have a month time. And I think the new the new animal, whoever it's going to be, will need some cloth as well. There are beautiful dollies, but they are all quite big. I don't know what I'm going to make, but something. But there is there is the bunny. And bunny needs a friend. So, 
Uh, yeah. What else? I don't know. Do I have anything else? I wanted to show you my chicken earrings. <laughs> I showed them on Instagram <laughs> a few days ago. And I got a lot of questions. Because chickens... Uh, we have crazy granny designs. She makes all sorts of funny earrings. I have a few. And she had summer sale. And of course, I could not resist. And I got myself chicken earrings and something else. Some other things as well. <laughs> uh, how cool are these? These are plywood, so they are very light. And I don't know. I have a feeling we might be getting chickens next next year. <laughs> I think this is where it's going. <laughs> Knit chickens, chicken earrings. I have some other chicken things. I have chicken towels as well and chicken tablecloth. <laughs> um, yeah. That would be fun. I don't know. I've been thinking about autumn knits and I just wanted to share one 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 knit that I'm thinking about for autumn. I don't know. Have you seen this book? I have not showed this book to you, but I got it when it came out earlier this year. I don't know why I haven't showed it to you. It was probably a bad moment or something. It's a contrast book by by Mayu Knits. Uh, Mayu is a wonderful Finnish knitwear designer and she has a podcast on YouTube and she's on Instagram and on Ravelry and I have knit a lot of things by Mayu so I had to get this book. It's a big book. It's like, it weighs over a kilo. It's a big beautiful book and I'm not gonna go through the book now but you can see all the patterns on, on Ravelry if you search for this book. I will just show you the one that it's it's in the back of my mind all the time and I just really 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 want to knit it. It's a huge project. It's a big commitment and I don't have yarn ideas yet. I do have a yarn idea but I'm not sure if if that's the yarn I want so I will just show you the pattern. It's called Long Road Cardigan and I I like the long version. It has a lot of cables and it has a hood. There was one cardigan that I started last year from Novita magazine. You saw it in my whips episode, but I frogged it. I decided I'm not gonna make it. I was not happy with a lot of things and I decided I'm just not gonna make it. So, could this be my long, beautiful cabled cardigan? There is also a short version, but for some reason the long one speaks to me I don't know, are there more photos somewhere? or was that it? give me a second <laughs> yeah, now she's just going there, there it was worth it, waiting for me to go through the book there it is all the details I, I want this so bad because I have my favorite long cardigan, it's a commercial cardigan I don't remember the brand it's with a bit of mohair. It's long, it's grey, it's just plain stock in it. It's very, very simple. And I have I've worn it for last, I don't know, seven years. Three seasons out of four. I just don't wear it in winter because it's long. But I wear it in summer, I wear it in spring, I wear it in autumn. And it looks dreadful. It has lost mohair here and like there on the sides. It's It has bald spots. And I realize it's time for a new cardigan and I can knit and I don't want to buy a cardigan. I want to make a cardigan, of course. Yeah, I bought that one before I had the skill to make something that long and beautiful. And I have loved it. I have loved it. I have worn it. It wasn't cheap because it, it has quite good content. It has some wool and... Um, and mohair and I don't know probably some polyamide or something like that as well but I have worn it a lot and it looks like that now <laughs> um yes so I need a new cardigan and I think that would be a, a great option and then there's a new book coming out by Lindsay Fowler uh, Lina Publishing is releasing a new book and I'm waiting for it it's coming out end of end of this month and it's beautiful mostly because of the blanket it has <laughs> you can follow Lindsay on Instagram and she's posting pictures from the book and so is Lina Publishing and it has a lot of beautiful patterns her her style speaks to me it's the book is called Salt and Timber 
Uh, it will also be available in our my store, and I'm waiting for it. But you can pre-order it from Lina or your local local yarn shop that carries Lina books and magazines. Um, and her aesthetics aesthetics speaks to me, and I don't know her style is beautiful. And <laughs> why I want that blanket blanket the book. I saw a picture. The book includes a leftover yarn blanket and it's a knit blanket. It's from pieces and it's so beautiful. And I want that book just for the blanket. Probably all the other things are great as well. There there were some great socks and hats and I think mittens and something else. <laughs> and I want that book. And I'm also very excited about the newest liner magazine that's coming out in September. But I have nothing to show to you. It it will have a lot of great patterns. I'm telling you already that you should you should get it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think I think that's it for today because I talked about all my all my active whips. I I talked about I don't know life life update. Do you want a life update? I could knit on something very very quickly let's grab a sock i don't know five minutes five minutes of knit, knit and chat <laughs> and then i'm gonna be off because mine are coming soon they are on a uh, my family left uh to feed a cat they are on a cat feeding duty because if somebody leaves the town we are we, we are always on a cat feeding duty we we can't have a cat my husband is allergic he can't be around cats for a long time so if somebody needs cat feeding service, we're always up for it because our, our kids love cats. Uh, grandma has a cat, but yeah, also. Um, I think they will be back soon. They should stop at the grocery also to, to buy some essentials. We, we ran out. Um, so what, what happened this week? This week school started on Wednesday. Yay. <laughs> I maybe can catch my breath finally because for the last two months there there has always been somebody hanging on me. I don't know. Kids have been going to work with me. We have been spending a lot of time together. Don't get me wrong. I love our kids and I love spending time with them, but sometimes I need breathing moment. Like I haven't been alone in this house forever. Like this today feels like luxury. That's why I'm not cleaning the house. They are usually somewhere around outside or running or at least one of them has been home at all times. And right now it's just me and the dog. <laughs> and it feels strange. It's it's quiet because I can't even hear screaming and laughing from from outside. Not even neighbor kids weird where is everyone and all the windows are open it's very hot day and we actually yeah we've been collecting berries from the yard it's the time and we made a batch of juice in the morning we only made like five liters and then i said enough we can't get this house any hotter let's let's continue in the evening i don't know at night if we have to when it's a bit cooler because i can't take it it was 29 degrees inside at that point when we were making juice we made five liters i sealed it all in the bottles and uh we're making um what is it we're making red currant and black currant juice kids love it it's it's like we make a concentrate and then i we dissolve it with, with water when kids are drinking it. It's not very sweet. I don't put a lot of sugar in it. But some amount that it would stay good. And I don't know. Yeah, that's what that's what I've been up to. That's why I haven't cleaned yet and I, I was supposed to be cleaning now, but I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't I don't feel like. <laughs> Can you blame me? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, is there anything else really? I don't think I have much to tell you. Our hedgehog is back. He he was he wasn't here for a week and now he's been back coming for food again. Yeah, we've been feeding a hedgehog and I found a grasshopper in our daughter's bed yesterday. I don't know how that one got in. 
because we have netting on the windows, so it must have traveled, I don't know, with the shoes, with the dog. <laughs> Can a grasshopper travel on a dog inside? I don't know. But yeah, that kind of things. Very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting news from around here. Um, I don't know. I don't want to talk about anything negative. There has been a lot of that as well, but I'm I'm just not in the mood. I'm very much trying to relax this weekend because next week I have to deal with some unpleasant things and make some hard decisions and I'm not looking forward to it. And yeah, start of the school was a bit stressful because our daughter got... I got a call one day before the beginning of the school that... Hello, I'm Sophia's new teacher. We transferred Sophia to a different class. It's a good thing. Yeah, we've been asking for it and um, into a more challenging class, which, which is very good for her because I don't think she was in the right place. It was not, it really wasn't challenging enough environment for her. And now it's better, but I, I got stressed out because I have not met the teachers. We have not talked about all her problems and issues. They just asked, oh, is she, is she on some kind of medication that we need to give her? Uh, no, but like there are a lot of other things I want to talk about. So we kind of scheduled a, a meeting for next week, but I don't know what has been happening there. How she seems to be fine. She seems to be happy. And I think she she took the change better than I did. So that's a good bit of the news. And then, then we got some sad news because Sophia's speech therapist is retiring. She's an older lady and she was supposed to retire a long time ago, probably already. But she just kept working. And now they told her that she needs to look for a new office because they are having... Uh, they are renovating the elevator in the building where she's renting and it's going to be long term and she's, I understand her. She doesn't want to look for a new place and it's easier just, just to end it there. But the reality is we will be without speech therapist and she needs speech therapist because our daughter goes to speech therapy and occupational therapy and Honestly, speech therapy is the more important one. And I'm 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 so grateful to her speech therapist because she was the only one who was not afraid to take her. Um she was non our daughter was nonverbal when we started speech therapy and all the other therapists that I tried to get in, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even look at her like she doesn't talk, she has nothing to do here basically. Yeah. This is a bit sucky place to be in because Finnish, I don't know, healthcare system is, it's a bit interesting when it comes to children with special needs because parents need to fight a lot to get any kind of services here. Maybe like in the capital area, it's a bit easier, but if you're in a smaller place, place you need to fight with your claws and your teeth for everything. And... We are short on the specialists, like they can't provide service to everybody. And that's why I'm I'm very stressed out because we were on a waiting list on a queue in a queue for a very long time. And we only got speech therapy because we found the therapist by ourselves and it was in a different town. And we've been driving there once a week. It's not close, but it really didn't matter. Main thing that. We got help and we got good professional help and and yeah, I'm very grateful for that. That's why I'm very sad and stressed out that that's going to end now because we still need a lot of help <laughs> and I don't think I can get anything near that level in our town, if anything at all. I'm afraid they will just put us on a waiting list and we will be there till, I don't know, till she's 18. <sighs> rant over. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I don't know. I've been, I've been, yeah, my anxiety levels are through the roof this week. <laughs> and I've been dealing with it, I think, pretty well before, before this week. This week I've been stressed. I lost my sleep because there are many other things on top of that. 
many other things that are putting pressures on me and I don't know. <laughs> and all this, now this came, came on top of everything else, our daughter's speech therapy. Yes. Yeah, and they don't believe in early intervention in Finland. Basically, they prefer to wait till the kid is three or five, and then maybe, if you're very lucky, you will get some sort of therapy. And if you would start at, let's say, age of one or two, then probably by the age of five, you your problem... There is a big chance your problem will be resolved. But waiting is the key here, because nobody believes in early interventions. Oh, we've been through this. We've been through this and I'm <laughs> I'm deeply traumatized from the system and from the things we we need to fight for. Yeah, and everything I have listened to and the thing the mean things I've been told and the Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what else do I have something nice to tell you the weather is nice and I already mentioned that and I don't know what else knitting is nice it keeps me sane knitting keeps me from unraveling I need a poster like that on my wall just to remind me <laughs> um, yeah knitting is magic it's like it's a therapy it's it's my happy place it's all of that and it's a good workout as well. Yes, for your hands and your brain. I don't know. I love this sock. I love how it's turning out. I love that it's not pulling. I'm actually surprised. When I looked at the yarn, I thought, mm, there's a slight chance it might be pulling, but it's not. So I'm very happy about it. I don't know, did anything else exciting happen in real life last week? I think that's that's pretty much it. This, the most exciting thing is the be beginning of the school. <laughs> I have free hands. I can finally go to work alone. Alone. I can actually do some work because I, I, I have, been, have not been able to dye yarn because I can't do that with the kids around. It's just not safe at all. So we've been just packing orders and arranging the shelves and doing all of that. And my work is behind. I need to catch up now. I need to catch up now, now that I have a bit a bit more free hands. Yes. Makes me happy and 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 I don't know, I lost the thought while <laughs> while looking at the sock. Yeah, I think I need to go vacuum. I don't wanna. Do I have to? Yes I have to. The dog is shedding again. I have to. There's a lot of fur. On the living room carpet. What if I just vacuum the carpet? <laughs> no. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna go now. Because I don't have much to tell you. I think that was it. And I'm very happy that you're here with me. Third, third week in a row. Yay. <laughs> I don't know. Could I really keep it up like that once a week? I'm not putting pressures on myself. Once every two weeks is fine as well. But I've been on a roll once a week. Yay. <laughs> uh, it's just opportunity presented itself and I really didn't want to clean the house. <laughs> but now I'm gonna. But, but a cup of coffee first. Is it too late for coffee? It is a bit too late for coffee. But I think I'm gonna have one anyways. Because in that package that I opened today, there was marzipan. And that's my favorite candy i love marzipan it's it's oh <laughs> i get goosebumps just thinking about it and it's the good kind i saw it thank you so much my dear viewer for everything the package was wonderful and yeah and thank you all for being here if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe youtube likes it and then it recommends it to more people who want to join us here i don't know i'm playing with I'm sorry if I'm driving you mad with this. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> um, just happy to be here. That's why I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed in general this week. But I'm going to go now there and I will I will see you next time.
Maybe next week. <gasps> now I hear the coffee machine is switching off. Always, it always does that when I'm when I'm ready for another one. Yes. <laughs> so, long goodbyes. Thank you for everything, and I'll see you next time. Heippa.